So first, uh, let me thank uh, organizers for inviting me to participate in this conference. It is a real pleasure for me to meet the people I haven't seen for some years uh, and to take part in this nice meeting. So originally, first start me, let me start with some caveat. So originally what I was asked <coughs> by <coughs> Carol Pelson to participate in the conference, I, I wanted to talk about some combinatorial problems connected with special Lie groups. <laughs> it was a topic I, I wanted, I, I pursued some times ago, but it has been already several years from that time, so it was easy for Carl to convince me to talk for something which I am involved now. <laughs> and uh, this is to excuse that it has, it is a little bit apart from the main topic of the conference, so please treat it as a kind of entertainment. I don't know whether it is a good idea <laughs> to entertain ourselves already at this stage of the conference, but hopefully it will work, okay? So, so what I wanted to tell you is about some, <clears throat> I would say, witty application, or rather trivial mathematics, at some unexpected, to some unexpected uh, problems connected with some real life experiments, it not, even not, I'm a physicist, even not physical experiments, but rather neurophysiological experiments or psychological experiments. Okay, let's go. So, so I was involved uh, two years ago with some group of friends with some experiment, which was of uh, neurophysiological or psychological uh, mm, type or character. And the, the idea of the experiment was to, the, to identify features of artistic images that influence perception of art. So uh, this, uh, this was a real life experiment performed on some two groups of <coughs> viewers visiting two different exhibitions, which we organized in an art gallery. So first exhibition, uh, contained or exhibited uh, two 12 pictures, uh, abstract pictures, you will see them immediately, uh, <coughs> produced by some, or, uh, produced by some artists, okay, and uh, professional artists. And the second exhibition uh, was uh, simi very similar, so it was two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I don't remember, uh, with the same gallery, <coughs> which, in which we Show, uh, sh uh, shown uh, uh, 12 pictures produced by a neural network in a sense, okay? So at the very beginning, I want to stress that we didn't attempt to uh, measure an aesthetic value of, uh, of, of both uh, productions, I would say, nor improve the methods of producing pictures by neural networks, which, 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 um, be better or nicer or, or whatever, but rather to mm, reconstruct uh, viewer reactions or to understand viewer reactions, so perception principles. Okay, so the team consisted of, of, of psychologists, neuro, neurophysiologists, okay, somehow myself also, by some strange reasons, okay. When we started this, I, I even we didn't even think. So I didn't think about some kind of application of mathematical reasoning to, to explanation. Okay. So the the first uh, the first um, hmm, exhibition was by as I told you by a professional artist, and these are some details about this exhibition. It was in a real good uh, picture or good exhibition gallery in one of. Polish cities, and uh, okay, so there are some few few uh, remarks about this this artist and the exhibition. This text, which is written written uh, here, is uh, some I would say a paradigmatic text, which you can always <laughs> find in the leaflet uh, <coughs> of the exhibition. So I cited it here, 
uh, and uh, and this is this these are the the pictures. Okay, you see that uh, uh, there are twelve of them. They are quite abstract. Okay, they have some they have some titles which are here written in Polish. I didn't dare to translate them into English because it does not make too much sense. In any case, okay. So these are the the uh, artist uh, inventions. Okay, and this is the second uh, second uh, exhibition. As I told you, the pictures were produced by neural network, so called uh, uh, I think this guy generative uh, adversary uh, network. The, I'm not a specialist in that. The idea is that that uh, uh, the of this particular network was uh, to produce, or the goal to, to, to construct such a network was to, to produce a realistic pictures, actually, which somehow <coughs> mimic the environment, uh, usual, uh, I would say, picture of the, our environment, so photographs in a sense. But if you perturb it in, in a clever way, it can also produce some abstract abstract pictures upon the knowledge which, which it get, get, gets from some training, okay? Okay, so uh, that, that we produce some several thousand of these pictures, then uh, then there is there was a procedure of, of uh, selecting the pictures in a sense which were more uh, more similar or closest to the to the pictures of the artist, okay? So just by some trivial comparison of intensity and color of, of the pixels, okay? And some, some, I would say, distance function. Okay, these are the pictures produced by our network. As I told you, I do not want to uh, discuss the idea whether they are good or bad. They are bad, in my, in my opinion, okay? But this, is, this was not the problem. Uh, this was completely not our <coughs> con, uh, con, uh, concern, whether these are good, these are better, or these are nicer or not than the other one. And there are also some, so the titles were also produced by some chat GPT, more or less, and, uh, and the, uh, also the leaflet of the exhibition was produced by chat GPT, okay? So this was, a little bit deliberately made in, in such a way because they were exhibited in a real uh, gallery, in a concrete gallery, and we wanted to to avoid any bias from the point of view of. So I'm just confused. So you, so the not network was trying to produce uh, photorealistic things. So yes, but you can. You, we, you, you, you somehow per perturb this, this, this. Uh, so you tried to, to do something photorealistic and then you gave him tracks somehow. Yes, right? yes, 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 yes. More or less, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can I can tell something more probably about this process, but I, I, I was not involved in doing that, okay? So I know that. Okay, so mm, this was, as, as, as I... As I mentioned, this was uh, deliberately so that because you wanted to exhibit this as a real exhibition, uh, without uh, giving any low knowledge that it is really something, uh, I would say, artificial produced, to uh, avoid any bias from the point of view of viewers, okay, who, for, for example, prefer real life, uh, real, real, real uh, uh, artistic production uh, over the computer production, okay? Especially that, that the group of people, oh, there were, the, the exhibition was, uh, they were on, on the same, same gallery, uh, the, was randomly distributed uh, pictures with uh, random uh, titles, I would say, and uh, as I told you, the <coughs> advertising leaflet text was also generated by GPT-3, and the, so this chat bot, and, the, and it was, uh, the, the origin of this of images was kept confidential, so nobody knew about us, uh, about our product, our our idea of, of giving this. Okay, so so as I told you, just to not to avoid any bias against. Okay, so the, especially that the the real experiment 
was performed on the two groups of students of, of art in this uh, in the Academy of Art. Okay, so the and the, 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 the what 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 kind of experiment it was? They were asked to the gallery. They were invited to the gallery. They uh, they they follow actually some okay. So they they went to 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 see the pictures and then. There was two experiments at the at the spot. Okay, so so somehow with some sophisticated, uh, not very precise, I would say measurement. Uh, uh, it was uh, their their eye eye tracking uh, movement was was recorded, but this was not the part of experiment I wanted to <coughs> discuss because uh, in fact uh, after this visit after any visit of two two visits or. There were actually two visits of each group to 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 the to the to particular um, exhibition. They were taken to the nearby lab, uh, a neurophysiological lab, when they were shown the same pictures on the screen of the computer. And at that time, very precisely, was the the, the eye the eye uh, movements were followed. Also, some electroencephalographic measurements were done. So I will concentrate on the uh, on the. And this was this neurophysiological part. There was also a psychological part set, which was some kind of, of um, questionnaire which they had to to fill. Uh, then, uh, then there are some these are some details of of the experiment. You can read it. It's not so important. And this was this this uh, this questionnaire which somehow was more psychological. They were asked not explicitly again. Uh, about the, uh, the aesthetic, I would say, um, aesthetic uh, uh, feelings about this uh, these pictures, but but rather about their, I would say, what they think, about whether they understand the pictures, whether they understand the idea of the of the author, and so on, so. On. Okay, so, so obviously I have no idea how to estimate it, but we have the psychologist who made. Who made the the some uh, some estimates? There are many of these pictures. I do not want to uh, uh, bother you with showing all of them. Uh, the results were, I would say, more or less so that people differentiate even on the psychological psychological level between these two. Uh, exhibition, but it was not so clear. Okay, you can see what are this. These are some, I would say, uh, summarizing the results of this, and with the methods with psychologists use <laughs> of the results of this psychological experiment. More interesting was uh, for me the hmm, this eye tracking analysis. So you can. You can uh, say what the people looking at at this moment, and the idea is that uh, that uh, you simply uh, notice uh, how they concentrate, they focus when gazing on particular picture. Okay, and the uh, neurophysiological, I would say, parameters which are then. Somehow measured are this uh, so-called saccades and fixations. So you can you know from your exp your everyday life that when you look at something, so either you concentrate on some points or you sa somehow uh, s uh, skipping. Some okay, so you are jumping from one place to another with your with your gaze, and this uh, these are the saccades and the. Others are the, uh, the, the this, this focus incursively focus. Okay, so you can make some statistic. You can you can look at this uh, distribution of this in the space and so. On. Okay, so uh, so what is the really uh, this fixation? So maintaining the gaze of a single location. In this case, ballistic um, uh, paired movement. So two eyes uh, at the same time move in the same direction. And, and you change simply the point of fixation. Okay, you can you can somehow visualize the results by making such heat maps. Okay, so this is this is the simple description is the, the, the time of focus and this this is more or less because this is uh, yes this is this is uh, uh, this is simply the 
average time of fixing at particular areas of the pictures. There are two pictures, first pictures and from the surreal artist uh, exhibition, the second one from the from the artificial one. Okay. So you see differences which probably could be understood. And this is also the some summary summary of the results of this. So there are two things which are interesting. So are this amplitude of the saccade. So how far we jump with with the single saccade. Okay, so from one point to the other. Other and the second is average uh, fixation time. So you can you you can use it to characterize something like this. So if there are many saccades and amplitudes are high, so the 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 viewer um, seems to look for something at the picture. Okay, when you when it fixates, it, so it means that he found okay something like that. So 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 these are this something which which is which and the the main the main result was was that that. The, that there were differences when, when gazing at, the, at these real pictures and these artificial ones. It was good from the point of view, I would say from the political point of view, because at the very beginning we were afraid that there will be no results, so which will be somehow disappointing for the artist at least, okay? So, but it wasn't, okay? And at that time, I would say the problem is how to characterize what happened and why, okay? Okay, so... So in, in this language of my, my psychologist colleagues, so the, 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 what, what was to discover, what was discovered during this experiment, that people when, when looking at such, uh, such uh, pictures, so they are looking for something, okay? That there is some message which they look for, okay? Whatever is this message, so how to... Now, so let's go to some... Uh, and this was the idea at that time that maybe, okay, uh, let's uh, let's think what what really is the cause of this different different uh, I would say results of this neurophysiological experiment. So my idea was that okay, so if you are looking for something, you are looking for some characteristic features features of the pictures. What are the uh, uh, feature of a picture which you can identify very easily? Some geomet or topological or geometrical geometrical properties. And this is what, how it starts, this topological data analysis applied to this uh, particular case. So uh, uh, there are two things which are important in something which is nowadays co called topological data analysis. But, it, uh, but in application to this, it starts from the observation, okay, so what we are looking? We are looking definitely at something interesting. We are not looking at individual pictures, but some structures made out of group of, 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 of pixels, okay, because this, uh, everything was digitalized, at least at this at the screen of the of the computer. So for some particular features which could be of rather geometrical or more, more general uh, <coughs> topological topological um, mm, mm, character. And the idea which is behind this this topological data analysis there are two actually. For first one which is quite general is this something which is called persistence. So what is what is persistent? So you can imagine that you look at the picture, especially when you are looking for something at different resolutions in the size. You concentrate more on this part and less. Okay. So what is interesting that you are not concentrating on the particular pixels, but the structures which they form. And at some resolution, okay, you you can really in very good with very good resolution you can you can see, see single single points, okay, and this is nothing like that. But in some smaller resolution, okay, you see some structure, okay. So this is the resolution which results in some kind of circle circular structure with a hole inside, okay. But if you uh, decrease this resolution, so this hole vanishes, okay. So uh, this is. Uh, I would say uniformly <coughs> colored or uniform intensive part of the picture. So, uh, so persistence is uh, the I would say characterization of this interesting structure. So the structure, which is this uh, this circular-like structure, uh, um, borns at some uh, and some uh, is is is. Uh, um, uh, somehow 
appears at some and some uh, value of this uh, uh, filtration parameter. In this case, it is it is the um, the the resolution, I would say, uh, parameter of the of the picture, and then it, it, it dies at some other. Okay, so this uh, this uh, um, interval between this uh, birth point and the birth value of the parameter and death value of the parameter, it is called persistence. Okay. So uh, the idea is that more persistent structure. So that this this uh, interval is larger. This be between uh, birth and death is uh, longer. They are more important for the picture or the, for the viewer. Okay. Okay. The second uh, idea behind that is how to identify this topological topological um, properties. Okay. So let me make a small recap of of some kind. Of simplicial homology, so this is uh, everybody knows it probably. So there's only a short recapitulation, and the ideas behind it of, of the ideas behind it. So you have uh, uh, the idea of a simplex, which are the some uh, d point uh, d plus one points in the dimensional space in general uh, position. So you can say that okay. So the vectors are these vectors for uh, v zero, v k, or v n are uh, linearly independent. Uh, so this is a k simplex is a convex hull of this, and m-dimensional phase of a this is a convex hull of any subset. And uh, you can you can you can orient them uh, uh, this this uh, faces or simplices themselves, but uh, oh. faces by imposing some um, arbitrary order, and then uh, then uh, 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 evaluate this orientation by uh, by <coughs> finding the the um, uh, sign of the permutation of this of this uh, vertices. And uh, okay, then you can from the sim simplicest uh, you can you can construct a, a simplicial complex, which is, I would say, <laughs> nicely glued simplices. So it means that they can ha have only common faces. If they are not, if they have some some part common, it must be a common face. Okay, and then uh, there is a natural. Um, I, uh, you can you can uh, somehow co co uh, <coughs> consider formal sums or the module over this the, the over this uh, over z uh, with with this uh, with this uh, um, simplices and with these faces. Okay, and then it's uh, important idea is the boundary operator which somehow sends the uh, such a simplicial. <coughs> Complex to its boundaries or simplex to its uh, its faces, okay. And there are two kinds of, uh, uh, uh. and because uh, uh, because uh, of this property, the boundary of a boundary is is, <laughs> is zero. So there are two kinds of, I would say, uh, um, cycles. So such that 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 the boundary vanishes. They are either they are they are uh, cycles by themselves because they are <coughs> boundaries of something which is one dimension higher or or not so the second second are more important and but because one is the subset of the second so you can you can uh, you can construct the the uh, quotient of this of this uh, uh, two groups. Uh, these are three abelian groups, or you can you can look this as a as a modulo, modulus over over integers. So so there is the natural idea of the dimension of such a such a, such a set. Okay, uh, as a submodule or or as, as a free abelian group, a uh, uh, Nigel uh, idea of 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 a rank of such a group. And you know that this, uh, the dimensions or the ranks of these quotient groups are called Betty numbers. Okay, so this is my favorite, favorite example of how to distinguish empty, 
empty triangle from the solid one. So we calculate these petty numbers and by straightforward calculations, uh, somehow based on this, um, what was written on the previous transparency, you can find these results, these results about betty numbers for the uh, empty triangle and solid one. Uh, and you can distinguish on the algebraic way. Okay. So, the main idea of doing this for pictures, for the, for the arrays of, of pixels, is actually more or less the same, except we do not use the simplicial homology, but uh, so-called cubical homology. And the idea is exactly the same. So, you, uh, you this, 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 uh, this uh, squares will further uh, represent our pixel, but the idea is to construct all the structure simplices, some, some analogs of sim simplices and simplicial complexes as, out of squares. This is in two dimensional squares and some segments and points. And so the simplices are points, line segments of unit of length one, okay, so say uh, unit squares with vertices and integer points because this line uh, segments are also with some integer points. And complexes, or what was called in this uh, context cubical sets, are nicely glued with simplices, so you can, you can join them, but provided that the common part is also a simplex, okay, a common, common face of the boss. Mm. Okay, so this is an example of, of uh, Nicely glued simplices in this case. Okay, so homological. Mm. So the persistent cubical homology uh, is more or less the same. Uh, what what I explained by by this homology steps from this to two. So this is this cubical homology and the idea of persistence. Okay, so you. Uh, uh, so the, the homological properties, so the, our appropriate Betty numbers, say, are uh, calculated at different values of the filtration parameter R. In our case, this filtration parameter will, will be intensity of, of, the, of, the, of the pixel, in a say, sense. And then, and, and then, then you, you, you can represent this in different ways, so there are some some invented by the originators of this topological data analysis, uh, the, mm, the most common are so-called barcodes. So there are, so I will show you immediately how it looks like. These are simply the collections of the segments uh, with lengths uh, equal to the, to the persistence for this particular feature. The persistence um, uh, diagram is a two-dimensional plot of this uh, uh, bears and death points, and somehow something which is called persistent landscape. Okay, so this is this is an example. So you have such a structure uh, in the upper left corner, uh, which consists of several pictures uh, in this square, uh, this rectangular array with different intensity of gray. Okay, and. Uh, imagine that you look at this through some filter, which is transparent only if they are <coughs> bright enough. Okay, so at the beginning, what is visible uh, are only these uh, brightest uh, points or brightest squares. In this case, they represent pixels. So you see that it consists of two parts, two disjoint parts. One part is this uh, large one with two holes in the middle because these pixels are <coughs> invisible. And the second one, which is separated from this large one because this bridge between them <coughs> is also not visible, okay? So then when, you, uh, when your, your filter is more transparent and for example, you can see the points with intensity 0.3, so one of the holes here vanishes, okay? And uh, the second uh, remains and this is still a, uh, Two component part, okay. So from the point of, view of connectedness, this is two com component part. Uh, with uh, further, uh, I would say, 
with increasing of the transparency of the filter even more. So when reaching 0.4, you, you, you obtain, a, I would say, uh, one piece uh, because this bridge is, is visible. And further, finally, if it is even <coughs> more transparent, when you see this, this pixels with the intensity 0.5, everything becomes connected without holes. So, so uh, here you simply, uh, here are simply these barcodes, okay? So starting from point one, uh, the beta zero here is two because it, it uh, consists of two parts and beta, uh, beta one is uh, also two because there are two holes, uh, okay? <clears throat> so this is this and uh, this, uh, this one green and one red line. And then, okay, and they changes, this beta changes, okay? So this is very, okay. So, and this is the, this is the, the this uh, persistent diagram in which you put the points uh, with coordinates, birth and death of these particular features. These greens are for zero di dimensions, so I mean for <coughs> betas, for the number of, of of parts, the the red one are the 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 one dimensional, so it means for the number of holes, and the, the these are these are trivial transformation. Okay, so so you this is you you connect this this uh, this uh, points with the diagonal. Okay, by vertical and <coughs> parallel segments, and you obtain such a Pyramids, which is rotated by by 45 degrees, gives something which is called a persistent landscape. So this is for zero dimension. This is for two dimensions. So this is simply transformation of this. Okay. So how it looks for the pictures? Ten, ten minutes. Yes. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> so so um, how it how it, what what you get for the pictures? So these are barcodes, okay? These are barcodes for the real picture, and these are bar uh, in, in dimension zero, so for the number of connected components, and these are for uh, for dimension one, so it means for the number of holes, okay? These are these uh, landscapes, persistent lands landscapes, uh, for this and for zero and one dimension. And this is the same for this fake picture, okay? Fake, it means this produced by the network. So you see the big difference. I hope you agree that there is a big difference between these two. Uh, you can characterize by some numbers, okay? So the most straightforward one is the overall area of uh, 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 under this uh, this all, whole pyramids in this in this. And this is this is the simplest one. You can you can do many things. We go with a lot of numbers here. There is some other one which is called the Betty curve, which is not so important, but this simply the, counts the number of different of this of these features. Okay, so number of points or of areas when something like this happens. Okay, so you see that this is really a big difference. This is this was done. I have to to to, to explain a little bit. Uh, more precisely, namely, this was the the pictures were analyzed by transforming into to, uh, black and white. Okay, so to the grayscale, but you can do it also for the components, so the green, blue, and so on, and and yellow components, and mm, and that is uh, the results are more or less the same. So this this has no this is. This is for red channel, green channel, and blue channel, and this is uh, for artists, and this is for this uh, big uh, and for this, this network. Okay, so you see that the, the difference and the differences I told you, and this is also the something which is also very spectacular. So this is the result for the average of of this of this um, mm, area of this. Uh, okay, average uh, landscapes. Okay. Uh, so you see the uh, oh, so 
The first verse is that obviously this this uh, pictures produced by real matrix are more attractive because they are more complicated. Okay, they are more complicated, and this is the very trivial result. But that it is reflected exactly in this eye movement. It was it was somehow kind of of a discovery or more or less interesting result of this of this investigation. Okay, so to be aha, okay. There is also more, I would say, precise there we made a more precise um, evaluation of what happens actually during this uh, gazing on the picture is that we uh, uh, here are uh, the results for the there are white crosses which are maybe not very good visible here are well visible okay and red so these are the points at which uh, the uh, at some stage of the parameter this particular topological picture appears so the, the this uh, this uh, Betty number changes, okay? And you can compare this uh, with this picture which was somewhere here with the heat maps of, of, of concentration, okay? Of, of this uh, fixation. So the really people look at the points at which something happens in the picture, okay? Here or here. Uh, this is especially visible in these pictures, which are complicated, okay? Which are these artist pictures. So yes. So to be fair, uh, we should uh, we should uh, compare this with some other measures, and the other measures uh, were produced in the history of, uh, I would say, of more or less of with the aim of somehow estimating the the artistic or aesthetic values of the pictures, which was not our concern. And there are many of them, I, some, I some, some, um, enumerated them. The main idea is that you have something some, this is of statistical, statistical nature, but because they simply, uh, I would say, summarize in this way, that you have some image, which is a rectangular grid of pixels, uh, and there are some uh, feature descriptor, which is simply that, for example, intensity of gray, RGB, whatever you want. You make a standard histogram of this, <coughs> of the value of this function, with uh, with beads counting the number of pixels of a given value. So this you normalize a discrete uh, probability distribution, and you can calculate different things, whatever you want. For example, entropy or something like that, measuring for example in uniformity of the distribution. And upon that, I will not go into details. You can construct many uh, different uh, measures, and it were constructed by uh, by calculating some i would say statistical properties of these histograms okay defined in different ways depending what you choose as the as this feature descriptor okay this feature descriptor is usually some kind of uh, intensity as i told you or maybe gradient or whatever this is not so important these are the results of these other measures okay so as a box plot, so this it is written. What is what does it mean? Okay, so I would say that some of these features really discriminate between these pictures in a trivial way, uh, better or um, uh, or um, not so good as as ours, in which this is really visible because this is for the. Uh, big guns of this network. This is for a real artist, and but uh, but all these results are somehow global. They take a global global uh, values over the whole picture, and this is uh, in our case we could identify it with something which was real uh, uh, locally. Okay, so how do people look at that? Okay, so this is more or less everything I wanted to. Say so. Thank you very much once again, and I think you were entertained a little bit by this small piece of mathematics applied to some real experiment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There is time for a short. Or <coughs>
two questions. May I yes, uh, Richard. Did you try to, uh, because you said that you first showed at the gallery, and then the same thing, the same thing on the computer. Could you try to put upside down the computer, the same? <laughs> okay, a good idea. Anybody notice? No, probably not. Probably not, yes. Yeah, so I would say that all this, I would say what was concerned with this, this from this point of view, I think, also this result of this uh, uh, psychological experiment were very ambiguous, okay? So the questions were rather whether you understood the idea, okay, yeah, and you know. So, so put them upside down. Yeah, put them upside down and then the yeah, idea so. pro should probably vanish, okay? But this was not our concern. Our concern is how people look at what they are looking for. You can take anything to look at, mm -hmm. anything. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Just a piece of this. That's true. I completely agree. I completely agree. So from this point, my point of view was rather to to see what how the people react on different features, geometrical, topological. Okay, I prepared. I said that it is a, yes. a piece of art. Okay. So, so this was. Mm -hmm. And let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so I have a question. So in the way you designed the neural network to create the images. It was really not done in purpose to try to make some real art. You just wanted some image, which... No, it was rather at random. And then, the, then somehow by this similarity to this, what, what was this real art, OK? So by simply calculating the distance, uh, trivially dis the defined distance between the two, two sets of, of pixels, OK? So for example, concerning the intensity or color or something like that. Okay, but it was not done to really try to imitate the art. No, so it no, also no, explain no, no. why you, I mean, you really wanted to see how people behave compared yes. to two sets of images, but one was yes. not supposed to imitate the other. Mm -hmm. Yes? So I missed this point. What is this, this parameter, this gray scaling in the um, eye movement picture? Like the gray, scale, gray parameter, what was it in this measurement of the eye movement? Do you, you measure the uh, amplitude of this of this saccade, so called, and the time of fixing? This was very, uh, everything was very short because they were shown this picture for a sh short interval of time. Okay, so it was uh, all, all was uh, um, I would say in, in, in milliseconds, in a sense, measured. Okay, so the scale was as I exhibited. So we thank the speaker again. Thank you very much again for...